Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany. Are you having trouble with the living? If so, just call the afterlife's leading bio exorcist, the ghost with the most, Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime, baby. For my base doll, I chose Spectra, mainly for her white skin. This one does have some stains and yellowing, but that will only help our design in this case. I did briefly consider using Twyla as a nod to the animated series with the purple skin, but decided the white would work best. I've prepped her in my normal fashion by buzzing her hair down to a short stubble with my electric razor, then dropping her into a cup of boiled water to soften the vinyl. This makes it much easier to pop her head off. We want to avoid breaking that neck peg. Once the head is off, I can use my screwdriver to scrape down the plugs from inside her head and extract the gluey mess with some needle nose pliers. I use 100% acetone to remove her factory paint and I make sure to give her a quick rinse to remove any leftover residue when I'm done. I'm doing a yarn reroute this time around and because of the texture I'm after, I'm going to be plugging the unraveled strands directly into the doll's head rather than brushing and flat ironing them out first. With the strands separated, I hold the middle of a strand across my finger and then I slide it onto the needle tool. I can then plunge it in, making sure to keep the needle head perpendicular to the hairline. Now, it's super important to start the reroute then remember you didn't paint the scalp and go back and do that. That's me, ever the professional. Here's the reroute all done, and since it's a full yarn reroute, I didn't root every hole. It makes the hair way too poofy and thick. I secure the plugs with some liquid fusion glue, then leave it to set for 24 hours. The next day I comb it out with my pet hair brush. It gives it the perfect frizzy crimp texture. I'm careful to not brush too hard at the roots because I want that texture to be more pronounced there. Now onto the clothes. For the bodice portion of the dress, I'm using a corset pattern from Requiem Art. I first start with sewing all of the sign seams together. I wound up not using those two end panels. I don't know if my printer scale was off, but I didn't need them. I cut out a decorative lapel for the top edge and I hemmed the bottom edge of it with fabric glue. I cut notches so that the pointed edges would be crisp and I used my flat iron to help activate the glue for a better hold. I layer the bodice on top of the lapel with both right sides facing up and I sew it into place. I trimmed the excess seam, then I fold it over to form the decorative edge, and I used my flat iron to help it stay in place. For my skirt panels, I hem the inside and bottom edge of the stripe fabric for the split skirt design, then I gather the top edge of all pieces and attach them to the bottom edge of the bodice. The bottom edge of the green is going to get a distressed look with the help of a lighter, soldering iron, and some watered down acrylic paint. I do have a cheap soldering iron that is designated as my I'm going to do questionable things with you because I don't want to ruin my good one. The final thing for the dress is to attach some Velcro and to sew up the back seam. This dress is super cute and I feel like it's the perfect feminine version of Beetlejuice's suit. I'm not going to make custom shoes. I have no time. Make the custom design anyway. I guess this is going to be my Patreon reward for September, so be on the lookout. I got these printed and painted with Vallejo model paint in green, black, and white. Speaking of patrons, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of my friends over on Patreon. I'm so grateful to them and their support of my art. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Galena Harsian, Stephanie L., Manders, Hanu Made This, Delicious, Amber S., Awkward Burb, X Mini Studio, Camille, Dancing Johari, Kitsy, K. Whippell, and The Oak Magpie. The shoes turned out so good, and I love the little sandworm pattern heels. 
You know the scene where Beetlejuice has the carousel hat and his arms are curled up before turning into hammers? You see where this is going. I want to make her some long curled up arms. It's the perfect solution to a doll with no hands. I'm taking cosplay and running it through my pasta maker to make it an even thickness, then taking a length of wire and placing it down on top and cutting out the shape. You can see my first trial I actually had little 3D printed pegs, but they proved to be too brittle and I had to switch over to a complete wire structure. The wire inside allows these to be completely poseable. I layer a bit of clay on top, then clean up the shape and bake according to the directions. Once cooled, I can get them painted. I base them out in white, and be warned, I tried this first with spray paint, and evidently that's a no-no because it turned the surface sticky and I had to remake them. I then mark out one centimeter sections and paint them black. It's showtime! Um, I mean face-up time! Here are all the products that I've used. A full list is available in the description box below. I prime her with three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat and allow each layer to cure about 30 minutes. This creates a paper-like texture that allows the surface of the vinyl to be drawn on. I apply a new layer of sealant anytime I want to save my work or when my pencils will no longer build up color. I have a spray can icon in the top corner to indicate whenever I spray a new layer. I think the thing I get asked the most is what do I use to paint the face, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk a bit in depth about the brands that I use. I have three main brands of watercolor pencils that I like to use, Caran d'Ache Supercolor, Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle, and Jerwent Ink Tints. And I find that each one is good for different things. I know these higher grade pencils are expensive, but trust me when I say it's worth the investment. I started out using a lower end brand and while they worked okay, the colors were not as vibrant and it took much longer to build up colors which resulted in using a lot more sealant. And let's face it, Mr. Superclear isn't cheap and you constantly have to buy it. Pencils last so much longer, so really, it's mostly a one-time investment. You might need to buy single pencils periodically to replace the ones you use most. It makes more sense to save for good pencils and then have to buy fewer cans of sealant. I've definitely wasted so much money making this mistake because all of the lower quality supplies that I've bought had to be replaced. Now a little bit about each brand. If you're looking for an overall good pencil with lots of versatility, I would suggest the Caran d'Ache Supercolor line. They have a medium hardness so you can still get a fine tip with thin lines and they're also highly pigmented with great color buildup. It's also arguably the best white watercolor pencil I've ever used because we all know how hard it is to build that up. The Faber-Castell Art Grip Aquarelle has a very hard core. These have unfortunately been discontinued and their replacement, the Gold Faber Aqua, are absolute trash. I would suggest the Faber-Castell Aubrey Dura line instead. The harder core on these pencils makes drawing fine lines and hair so easy. It's what I usually use to sketch on eyes because when you're drawing something so small, the thickness of a line can mean your doll's eyes are different shapes. The final brand of pencils I use are the Derwent Ink Tints, and this was my first investment of pencils, but I made a big mistake when buying them. They're great, don't get me wrong, but there were a few things that I was unaware of when I got them. All the colors are extremely dark. There are no light pinks or purples to be found. They're also super soft, which makes getting a sharp point hard. Not impossible, but hard, and that also affects how fine your lines are. On the plus side, this is probably the darkest colors you're going to get without going with paint. It definitely allows me to push the contrast. When I bought them, I thought these would be the only pencils I would need, and this is where my regret comes in. I bought the 72 pack. I only use about two of these colors regularly, and I would say I haven't touched 70% of the rest of the pencils. I should have gotten a much smaller pack. Well, anyway, I hope this info can help you pick the perfect pencils for yourself and that you found it useful. We're now pretty far into the face up and I slowly built up color and intensified everything with each layer. I try not to do too much layering of pencils on top of each other in a single layer because I found that once sprayed, it makes it a bit muddy. I have been trying to push myself a bit with expanding my skill set and trying to do more brush work. I'm pretty shaky, but I've been improving slowly but surely. I definitely like the way my painted on hairs and lashes look over how they look when I draw. I was a bit worried about Spectra's face mold because her lips look a bit duckish. It wound up working out though and I parted them just slightly to show her teeth, paying homage to the classic Beetlejuice toothy expression. I had so much fun with this face up and I love how she turned out. The crazy texture and colors are always more interesting to do so I should definitely put more undead characters on my to-do list. 
She needs a stand, of course, and it can't just be any stand. It needs to be a stand befitting the ghost with the most. I decided I wanted to make the classic Beetlejuice sign, so I pulled a reference image into my 3D program and got to sculpting. Once I was finished sculpting, I got the sign and the tombstone printed on the Havier's reflex. They turned out beautiful, and once cleaned and cured, I get to work sanding away any support marks. Here you can see the final design for the sign. I do have plans for this to be lit, so I added holes for LED lights, as well as a channel for the wiring. The tombstone was a model I purchased on Colt, so I will leave a link for it in the description box. Now, you've seen my technique for painting stone, and it's pretty much the same as the dirt you'll see later, so I'm going to spare you the details this time and just jump straight to attaching it to the stand. I marked on the base where the tombstone will be, and I drilled two holes that correspond with two holes in the tombstone itself. I take a piece of armature wire and I form a prong and then push it up into the holes and secure it with a bit of hot glue. I then apply glue to the top and secure the tombstone onto the base. This wooden texture just will not do, so I wet the base and begin building up ground with foam clay. I find wetting the clay allows it to stick better and it's easier to smooth this way too. While the clay is still wet, I push rocks and bits of sand into the clay. Once everything's dried, I'm going to secure it with a layer of Mod Podge. Before I add on the sign, I do want to paint the dirt. I base it all out in dark brown paint, then I dry brush different shades of lighter brown on top. I remove excess paint from my brush so that it's not too heavy handed, and I brush it at an angle. It's best to use a really crappy, scraggly brush. I find that they create some of the best textures. Now I want to add some color variant. I dab watered down red, yellow, blue, and green paint all over. I spritz it with water and let it spread and run, and then I dab away the bulk of the excess color. Once it's dry, I can spray it with a clear coat sealant, and then I can glue on some fake grass in different spots. Let's move on to that sign. I first start by basing out the yellow, red, and black colors. I did make this text protrude a bit too much because it caused some difficulty when painting and some legibility issues with the shadows. With all the base colors finished, I start aging it. You know when you clean something and it's hard to get the gunk out of the corners? Well, now I'm doing that but in reverse. I'm dry brushing dirty colors into all the crevices and corners. I wound up not doing this in between the letters though because it made them too hard to distinguish. Now adding the lights. Originally I bought mini LED bulbs to use but after I actually sat down and created my circuit diagram, I realized there wouldn't be enough space for all the wire. To wire the 42 bulbs to a 9 volt battery, I was going to have to have 10 parallel circuits running 4 LEDs each in a series. I was ready to cry. <laughs> I really should have ran my numbers for the circuit before designing the sign, but I wasn't thinking. But hope wasn't as lost as I thought it was. I dug through my fairy lights and realized the bulbs would fit into the holes on the sign. I would just need to run two strands. I threaded the wires up through the aluminum post and into the sign. I then alternated lights, yellow and white. And once I had all the bulbs into their correct spots, I began securing them in place with some UV resin. When all the bolts were secure, I cleaned up the wires and twisted them to fit into the channel I made, which I might add barely fit into the design space as it was. Here you can see how the back plate fits on with the help of a couple of magnets to hide everything away. I really love this stand, and even though it had me panicking there for a little while, it turned out super cool and really makes Beetlejuice feel like Beetlejuice. You'll remember, here's where we started, a stained spectra with no hands, and now Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Here's where we ended up. 
Beetlejuice is no longer available. One of my Patreon supporters took advantage of the first offering perk and snagged her. However, I do have a couple of dolls available for purchase on my Etsy store. Just look for the link in the description box below if you're interested. I really enjoyed making this custom and more Beetlejuice characters are in the future. This is one that's been on my to-do list for quite some time. I actually bought the striped fabric about four years ago and the stars finally aligned and having an opening in my schedule this close to Halloween seemed kismet. I mean, September is Halloween Eve as far as I'm concerned. I wanted to thank you all so much for watching and remember, always be creating. Thank you.